subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lepakshi khurana here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 25th of January. India beefs up security ahead of Republic Day celebrations. Opposition slams Pakistan government for policy of appeasement towards terror groups. And Taliban discusses Afghanistan crisis with Norwegian officials in Oslo. And now for all the details. Security measures were ramped up across India on Tuesday to thwart any untoward incidents a day ahead of the country's Republic Day. India got its independence from British colonial rule in 1947 and became a republic on January 26, 1950, the day it enacted its constitution. Security measures were beefed up across India on Tuesday to thwart any untoward incidents in the wake of the country's Republic Day celebrations on January 26. Security personnel were seen patrolling the area near Rajput, a ceremonial boulevard in capital New Delhi, which witnesses the annual Republic Day parade that showcases India's military might and culture. The Delhi police has also installed face recognition system apart from CCTVs in several locations to immediately identify any terror suspect or criminal. Mask वहाँ पर हमारा staff जो deployed है वो सबसे पहले उन्हें रोकता है पहले mask की तरफ है उसका फिर उसके बाद उसे camera में देखने के लिए बोलते हैं उसके बाद entry होती है. Meanwhile, police in West Bengal state also increased security deployment at railway stations on Tuesday. India got its independence from British colonial rule on August 15, 1947 and became a republic on January 26, 1950. That marks the day of enactment of the constitution. Elaborate security arrangements were also witnessed in parts of Jammu and Kashmir, where security personnel frisked vehicles and conducted regular patrols. However, a grenade attack by suspected terrorists was reported in Srinagar city, which injured at least three civilians. India has long accused neighboring Pakistan aids terrorists infiltrate across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. And India on Tuesday recorded 255,874 new coronavirus cases, 16.39% lower than Monday, breaking a five-day streak of reporting over 300,000 daily COVID-19 cases. India has registered 255,874 new COVID cases in the last 24 hours, a decline of 50,190 from Monday, taking the infection tally in India, the second worst hit country after the US, to almost 39.8 million. The daily positivity rate considered to be a key marker of the pandemic status has dropped to 15.52% from Monday's 20.75%. The active cases presently stand at 2,236,842. India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage has crossed 1.62 billion. At least 72% of India's adult population is fully vaccinated, whereas at least 52% of children in the 15 to 18 years old age group have been inoculated with their first dose. Like several states, Indian capital New Delhi has been seeing a decline in daily COVID-19 infections with 5,760 new cases. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal on Tuesday said that the COVID-19 positivity rate has reduced by 20% in the last 10 days. He added that the restrictions in the national capital will be soon lifted. <laughs> हम सब मिलके मैं एलजी साहब हम सब मिलके जल्दी से जल्दी जितनी जल्दी हो सकेगी हम इन रेस्ट्रिक्शंस को हटाएंगे आपकी जिंदगी को दोबारा ढर्रे पे लाने की हम कोशिश करेंगे दोबारा सुचारू रूप से आपकी जिंदगी चले इसकी हमें पूरा प्रयास रहेगा 
Meanwhile, Indian SARS-CoV-2 Genomic Consortium, the center's research body, said in its latest bulletin that the Omicron variant is in the community transmission stage in India and has become dominant in several metros where new cases have been spiking exponentially. News from Pakistan. Opposition lawmakers in Pakistan's Senate on Monday slammed the government for what they called a policy of appeasement towards terrorist outfits, noting that talks with those who challenged a writ of the state had emboldened. Senators voiced concern that the militant group the Hariki Taliban Pakistan has violated ceasefire agreements, but the government still says its doors are open for talks. The opposition in the Pakistan Senate, the lower house of parliament, on Monday slammed the government for what it called a policy of appeasement towards terrorist outfits, noting that talks with those who challenged writ of the state had emboldened. The remarks came during an adjournment motion on the rising tide of terrorism in the country, especially after a blast in Lahore city claimed by Baloch separatists last Thursday that killed at least three people. Opposition lawmakers also voiced concerns over talks with the outlawed Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan or TTP, which were being held through the Afghan Taliban that has still not been recognized by any country. Opposition Pakistan People's Party Senator Raza Rabani said the TTP kept on violating a ceasefire agreement in October last year, but the government still says its doors are open for talks. کہتی ہے کہ ہم مذاکرات کے لیے تیار نہیں ہیں آج پھر بھی حکومت یہ بات کہہ رہی ہے کہ ہمارے دروازے ٹی ٹی پی کے لیے کھلے ہیں اگر وہ پاکستان کے آئین کے تحت آتے ہیں تو جناب چیرمن اگر ایسی صورتحال ہوگی تو پھر ہم کیسے ایکسپیکٹ کر سکتے ہیں کہ یہ چیزیں جو ہیں وہ رکھیں Interior Minister Sheikh Rashid Ahmed, however, claimed that negotiations with the banned group had stalled because their demands were unreasonable. He also warned the opposition of a potential terror threat if it went ahead with its proposed long march against the government on Pakistan Day on March 23, and he asked opposition parties to consider rescheduling it. And moving on, a rising inflation has continued to raise the worries of residents of Pakistan-administered Kashmir. Members of opposition, Pakistan People's Party, recently held a gathering and urged the people in the illegally occupied region to support an anti-government long march to oust PM Imran Khan over the issue of soaring inflation. They blame the government has completely failed to control the frequent price hike amid an ongoing economic crisis. <music> Ahead of a long march to Islamabad against Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan's government on February 27 over spiraling inflation, workers and supporters of opposition Pakistan People's Party or PPP recently held a meeting in Pakistan administered Kashmir. The participants highlighted the concerns of the people in the illegally occupied region amid the ongoing economic crisis and urged them to come out in support of the long march to oust Prime Minister Imran Khan who has made the lives of poor miserable by failing to control frequent price high. Locals in Pakistan administered Kashmir blame instead of providing relief to the people in the already backward region Economic losses faced by Pakistan due to policy paralysis are also compensated from regions under its illegal control. Moving on, the three-day-long summit between Western officials and a Taliban delegation concluded on Tuesday, mainly focusing on the humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan during talks. No country has so far formally recognized the Taliban-led administration, but Norway and NATO allies have said talks were a necessity given the depth of the crisis. Norwegian Foreign Ministry officials on Tuesday met representatives of Afghanistan's Taliban rulers on the last day of a three-day summit on how to alleviate the country's humanitarian crisis in Oslo. No country has so far formally recognized the Taliban-led administration, but Norway and NATO allies said the closed-door discussions were a necessity given the depth of the crisis. 
Meanwhile, separate meetings were also held by European Union and French officials with Taliban-appointed Foreign Minister Amir Khan Muttaki, with talks focusing on economy, humanitarian aid and other relevant issues, Abdul Kahir Balkhi, a Taliban spokesperson, said. Earlier on Monday, the Taliban delegation also met diplomats of eight countries including the US and EU representatives amid protests that the talks could be a step towards their recognition and concerns about rights of women under the hardline regime. Millions of Afghans have been plunged deeper into poverty since last year's Taliban takeover, which resulted in disruption to aid programs and deteriorating food security. According to reports, about 23 million people, more than half the country, face severe hunger, and nearly 9 million are on the brink of starvation. And moving on to news from Nepal, the Election Commission of Nepal is all set to conduct the National Assembly elections slated for Wednesday that will be held for 19 posts of the National Assembly member. Election Commission spokesman Charlie Graham Pordel said the entire management of peace and security, health protocol and election centers has been over and the remaining works would be completed today. The voting will be conducted from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Wednesday. There are eight polling stations and 14 centers across the country. The term of 19 National Assembly members will expire coming March 4th. Currently, nine political parties are in the election fray. Nepal's upper house of the parliament has 59 members and according to the constitution provision, the term of one-third National Assembly members is expired every two years. And several parts of India, including capital New Delhi, is reeling under the cold wave conditions due to dry northwesterly winds, which are bringing cold air from the snow-clad Himalayas. People in northern cities were seen sitting near bonfires, wearing several layers of clothing, and while many chose to stay indoors to avoid the cold. People in India took precautions on Tuesday to protect themselves from the intense cold wave conditions. With the weather being chilly and fog enveloping capital New Delhi and northern cities, people sat near bonfires, wore several layers of clothing and many chose to stay indoors to avoid the cold. On Tuesday, the minimum temperature in Delhi settled at 7 degrees Celsius and the maximum hovered around 16 degrees Celsius. According to India's weather forecasting agency, the minimum temperatures in northwest and central India are likely to drop by 3 to 5 degrees Celsius over the next five days. South Asia's winters are not as cold as other regions, but the millions of poor here are hit harder because they live in the open and do not have enough warm clothes. It's Snowfall in northern states like Himachal Pradesh and Jammu and Kashmir territory has a direct impact on other northern states. Meanwhile, amid the ongoing winter season, thousands of migratory birds have arrived in the wetlands and lakes of Kashmir. Authorities here have taken the initiative to provide food for migratory birds during the harsh winter season, aiming to make their stay comfortable in the region. इसलिए हमारे ये पैडी ग्रेन्स भी डालते हैं ताकि ये ये बिचारे भूख से नमर जाए क्योंकि जब फ्रीज होता है ज़्यादा इनको खाने के लिए कुछ नहीं मिलता है तो हमारे ऑफिशल्स बोट्स में जाते हैं आपने अभी भी देखा होगा हमारे ऑफिशल्स बोट्स में जाते हैं दूसरी जगह वो डिफरेंट जगहों पर जाते हैं और उनको पैडी ग्रेन्स डालते हैं ताकि ये फीड करें दिस माइग्रेटरी बर्ड्स मोस्टली कम फ्रॉम साइबेरिया चाइना रशिया एंड अदर कोल्ड कंट्रीज देयर अराइवल बिगिनस इन ऑटम एंड देयर फाउंड इन द वेटलैंड ऑफ द वैली टिल मार्च एंड अप्रैल Kashmir is currently going through its 40-day period of harshest winter known as Chillaikala, during which temperatures dip to sub-zero levels and the blanket of thick snow covers the region. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. India beefs up security ahead of Republic Day celebrations. Opposition slams Pakistan government for policy of appeasement towards terror groups. And Taliban discusses Afghanistan crisis with Norwegian officials in Oslo. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow.
light. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.